Hi, this is Gil with Air Compressor Parts Online. Today what I want to show you is how to replace the piston and cylinder um, and the ring on an oil-free air compressor. This is our, the pump assembly from a rigid unit, but they're all pretty much the same. It's important. I thought I'd put this together because we get a lot of people that um, try to put the piston cylinder together and they ruin the piston ring or they say it doesn't work because they're putting it in totally backwards. So today we're going to go about how to install it properly. This will cover this one, but it'll pretty much cover most of the oil-free units out there. Obviously the first thing you have to do is to remove the head of the pump. So once that's done, once you remove the head bolts, hopefully it'll be easier than it was for me, you're going to end up uh, removing the valve plate valve plate gaskets. Typically it's best to replace the uh, valve plate gaskets and o-ring while you were uh, replacing these. Now this particular unit here, as you can see, gasket comes off in pieces. But these oil-free units you really, really, really need to make sure that the air filter is kept clean and Oh my gosh, terrible. Um, this air filter element did not do much to protect this because it needed to be replaced. Especially if you're in a dusty environment, it's going to wear these rings out. These rings are a composite of a bunch of different materials. And this particular kit, you're going to notice you have that piston that goes up and down, a kind of a, a wobble type of piston. I'm going to show you the piston cylinder kit that you're going to end up getting for the most part. The piston cylinder assembly comes um, as a kit and the piston ring right here is already pre-assembled on this one. On some units you can actually buy the piston ring and the cylinder. What you simply do is remove the screw here, take the flat ring, and when you tighten the top down, it's actually going to make this concave, so that'll it'll turn the flat ring into a concave one. Now this is the biggest error that everybody's doing. They're taking the piston and the cylinder, and instead of removing the piston from the crankshaft, they're like, okay, I can just shove the new cylinder down over top of that. Wrong. It won't work. For one, this one has a lip on the inside. It will not go. It'll tear this ring up if you do it this way. These piston assemblies have to come from the top down into the cylinder. As you can see, I'm pulling it. I'm getting a nice tight fit. If I was to take this and shove it from the, from the bottom, in other words, if this did not have, this particular one has a lip, you can't do that. But if it was open and I shove it, what's it going to do to this new piston ring? It's going to tear it to pieces because you don't slide it down like that. This is what you do when you need to replace the piston in the cylinder assembly kit. Typically, you should have um, you should have a fan. If you don't have a fan, then it's not going to keep the unit cool. Okay, this will pop and slide off. So you just take that screw off, slide it off of this um, what they call an eccentric. Now, now that we have this off, the next thing we're going to do is we're going to remove the uh, piston assembly. We're going to remove that off of the eccentric. So we're going to get another Allen wrench here. Loosen it up a little bit. Now this simply has a standard needle bearing inside of it, a roller bearing. Okay, that was easy. It just simply slides off a good old bearing. This bearing right here, this is in good shape. It does not need to be replaced, this roller bearing. Here you can see the roller bearing. It's a sealed bearing, but these bearings can be had from any bearing shop. So what we're going to do now, and this particular piston cylinder assembly, as you can see, slides on the new, uh, the new piston assembly slides okay. on here. 
So what happens is people get this and they're like, okay, I don't want to take the fan off, or they just don't know. So what they do is they take the new ring, they put it on there, and then they try to shove this down over top of the piston ring. And in doing that, it shreds the new piston ring. So you don't do that. So this is what you do. You install the cylinder. One, two, you take the new piston assembly with the ring established and ins installed, you pull it down. It's forming on there nicely. You slide it over top of your bearing. Things you want to make sure of is that the piston assembly <clears throat> is nice and flush against the bearing. So you can see that the bearing on this particular unit, it could actually slide further in or further out. But what you want to do is you want to make sure that the, con the uh, connecting rod is in the right position. You don't want it to be like this. Why? Because it's not going to be pushing straight up and down. You don't want it to be too far in, but then it's going to rub against the eccentric. So what you want to do is make sure that it's properly in the middle, spaced on that bearing, then tighten it up. That's where it's supposed to be. That way you're going to have proper alignment. And you simply tighten the bearing up, look for the torque specs, you got to make sure that it's going to be snug. If you don't see any torque specs for yours, just make sure it's snug on there. So now what's going to happen is when that motor turns and goes round and round, it gets to the bottom, it gets to the top, it's doing great. See? No worries there at all. And then you simply replace your valve plate assembly um, gasket, the one that came apart. I'm not going to do that on this particular unit. You put your head back on there, reassemble it, put the, make sure that the uh, fan goes on here nicely so that it does not come in contact with the uh, cylinder and as you can see it goes up and down and that's how you do it. So the big thing for these oil free units is do not try to shove the cylinder down over top of the piston ring. This pretty much takes care of any brand out there for the most part especially when you have these. Once you install the piston connecting rod assembly, the valve plate, the head uh, and also the gaskets inside do not forget to get a new air filter element. Um, if the air filter assembly is cracked or is in bad shape, just replace the entire assembly. A lot of times you have to buy the whole assembly anyway. They don't cost that much. But don't be cheap and try to reuse or blow out the air filter element. That's the only thing really protecting the cylinder and the piston. I want to show you what the old one looks like, by the way. Now this particular one, the filter assembly was in bad shape. I want to show shape. you the wear right here. All of these grooves are caused by debris, grit, sand going through the air filter assembly. And the second thing that takes the abuse is the actual uh, ring itself. Okay, so what have we learned? One, when you get your new piston cylinder kit, you're not going to take the cylinder and try to shove it down over top of the piston assembly. No, you're going to take off the connecting rod. It doesn't take that long as you saw what I was doing. Put your cylinder inside the frame of the pump. Take your piston assembly, pull it down through the piston, slide it down, shove it on the eccentric, tighten this down, valve plate assembly, gaskets, head. You're in good shape. This thing will run forever. Last thing, what are you going to do? Get a new air filter.